Hey gang, it's Chris. So tomorrow, June 4th, is National Running Day, and in honor of that, I've brought in a special guest from the next room where we share a bed, uh, Coach Corky. Hi gang! So, in addition to being my girlfriend, you are... A running coach, personal trainer, and sports nutritionist here in New York City. Are you going to keep your medals on the whole time? I prefer not to. They're really heavy, actually. <laughs> So tomorrow, thousands of people across the country will be going out for a run, and Coach Corky is here in case uh, you're a beginner and you've not run before to help you know how to get started, right? Absolutely. All right, so first tip for a brand new runner. Get off the couch. Um, get off the couch, lace up some sneakers, and head outside. Um, your duration might be you know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes of being on your feet. There might be some running and walking um, in some sort of combination. Yeah, when I started running, um, I thought I was incapable of running. We used to do those like mile and a half tests in gym class, um, and I would be like one of the last kids to finish, and I just thought I couldn't do it. So when I started running, um, I did the Couch to 5K, which you can find if you Google. You know what? I'll put a link yeah. down below, but you can Google it too. Um, and you just you start out, you're running like 30 seconds and walking for a minute or two minutes, and then you're running another 30 seconds, and I don't know, a month later, I guess, two months later or so, I was running for 30 minutes without stopping, um, and it felt good. Reason number one that you should start running is because running is a natural antidepressant. And uh, if you're like me and you've gone through uh, periods of clinical depression, um, I didn't need any uh, pills because my therapist said that all the running I was doing was probably a better antidepressant than uh, the actual medication would have been. Second piece of advice is get your feet in some good shoes. Um, running in shoes that are old, um, beat up, and or bought for fashion, not the place to start. So we have uh, some running shoes here. There we go. What makes um, this shoe different from this shoe? This shoe is um, a trainer, but a very lightweight trainer. Um, it's something I can run in, but it's something that um, a heavier runner or somebody who's more injury prone should not be in. While this shoe is much more of a racing flat, I would use that on a track. I would use that um, in 5Ks. Um, depending on the person, they might even use it in 10 miles, 10 milers or half marathons. What about this one? That's a trail shoe. Um, once again, you, you'll you see um, there's a whole lot more grip at the bottom. Um, it's a much more solid shoe, a much more heavy duty shoe. It's built for terrain that's not in the city. It's built for um, off-roading. Now here is... <laughs> One of my old shoes. This one I actually did run a marathon in. You can see the treads are nicely worn off. Uh, it's a little ripped up. It's a little dirty. There's a hole where my toenail on my big toe cuts right through the shoe. Disclaimer, um, this doesn't mean all your feet are going to look like this shoe after you run. My second reason that you should start running, uh, running burns a hell of a lot of calories. <laughs> if I bike for like three hours, I might burn as many calories as if I uh, run for one hour. Yeah, I mean, it's good for cardio and stuff too, but let's be honest, it's June and we're all thinking about the beach. Look, Somebody needs to run. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody needs to go for a run. <laughs> Alright, so um, my third tip for new runners or runners coming back from hiatus is um, be patient with yourself. Your body will adapt, it just takes some time. Um, and set some goals. They might be like just complete a 5K. Um, and there's no right or wrong goal. You know, <laughs> you be you, you do you. <laughs> She says as she's on tiptoe trying to be as tall as me. Yeah, well, uh. I'm trying to make sure I'm free. <laughs> um, reason number three that you should consider running is butts. But Go do a big, like, 20,000 person race, like your, your city's marathon. Don't be nervous. People walk those things. Like, you don't have to run at a particular speed. But um, go do it and just trust me. But All right, so let's say somebody's already into running and they want to get better at it. Sure. Um, what do you think they should do? Um, Would you suggest they hire a running coach? Yes, <laughs> hire a running coach. If you want to get better, hire a running coach. Um, and where might someone find a running coach? You might be able to find a running coach on the internet. I'm sure there's a link that's going to be somewhere here for, we'll put a link for some here, coach. and I think we might have a link like some, here. Some, somewhere here. Um, or over here. Um, face. So, and then if you want to spend some money, I have this thing, uh, which is manufactured by Garmin, but there are other companies that make similar products, and this 
uh, connects to satellites out in space and tells me how fast I'm running and how far I'm running. It connects to a heart rate monitor that straps around my chest to tell me how fast I'm, uh, my heart is re... How fast your heart's racing. Yes. How far I'm lifting my feet off the ground, literally, it tells me that. Um, and I love this thing and it motivates me to run. Uh, it does cost like a couple of hundred bucks. Um, so there's that. But um, you probably have a smartphone. You may even be watching this on a smartphone. And uh, there's probably apps for your smartphone that will work similarly, not maybe as well, but very, yeah. very similarly. You can even find a used refurbished watch or something too. Or So for the people who are still watching, um, tell us about what's, like, what's your favorite race that you've run? My favorite race would probably have to be the Boston Marathon. Um, I'm a sucker for a race that has some history to it. And I've got to say there's no better city to run through than Boston. The support's amazing and it's just a really cool course. That being said, big city races are often really fun to go spectate and or volunteer at. Um, the energy in a city, like here in New York, New York City Marathon, um, it's one of the best days for the entire city, I think. My next race is the Back on Your Feet 20 and 24. We'll probably put a link here for Back on My Feet. They're a great organization. Um, anyway, you can check out more there. Um, it's a 24 hour race and I am going <laughs> back to the race on my feet to, um, I will accomplish a hundred plus miles in 24 hours. So you're, you will run for 24 hours. Yes. Not without stopping, but like you'll run for 24 hours and Correct. in late July. Yes. In Philadelphia. Yes. Where Philly. it will be 90 to a hundred percent humidity. Sounds awesome. Yeah. So coach Corky, um, has a website. You've seen the link. Uh, CoachCorkyRuns.com. She also has a YouTube channel with a couple of videos on it, but we're going to put some more up uh, and she's going to be talking about her experience training for this 20 and 24 and getting a human body ready to run for 24 hours without stopping for very long. Yeah. I need like a salt lick and a barrel of water and just pounds of pancakes on my shoulders, I and think, or beer. something. And probably, yeah, maybe beer. I or don't know. Or gin and tonic. I, yeah, I don't know. I, <laughs> no, it's going to be an experience. <laughs> right. So thanks, Coach Cookie. Thanks for having me. And I hope that uh, we've inspired you to get out and run and run smart. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for thinking. And thanks for wearing out a perfectly good pair of sneakers.